I just returned from a two week stay in West Yellowstone and decided to make another conversations video talking about some of the interesting observations, some odds and ends, as well as a really neat hike I did on the western part of the Merry Mountain Trail that I highly recommend to others. I will not be revealing the GPS coordinates of the spot, nor our solutions to the poem. And just to cover my butt, everything is in my opinion. I'm still bound by the NDAs for various projects, so we'll have to remain vague. Sort of. Let's talk location. Sort of. Forrest said the poem was straightforward and you needed to, quote, look at the big picture, unquote. Even Jack confirmed as much. So, is it just a coincidence that the poem contains nine sentences and nine clues? I had so much fun, I don't even know where to begin. But let me introduce a few of my search friends and put names to faces. Justin and his poor neglected dog Tucker, Matt, smell the sunshine, me, and Rudy Green, who was kind enough to bring his 3D printed replica of the famous twig. And last but not least, Amy Seeks joined us. There are others out boots on the ground as well. Luli Bell posted a nice video of her crossing the Madison with ease. And the searcher who keeps reaching out to Matt, I have this to say, wrong guy. That awesome truck with the Texas TTOTC plate belongs to Tucker. I posted this next piece on Facebook, but want to include it in this video as well. Last week, after several rounds of drinks at Bullwinkle's, my Chase besties and I made a unanimous decision to pile into Justin's awesome truck and drive into Yellowstone Park at 10 p.m. and wade across the river to experience Forrest's special place as he intended it to be seen under a canopy of stars. The Perseid meteor showers were taking place. I made my way across the river using only a sliver of moonlight and my dim, almost dead headlamp to guide me. It was like I had wings floating over the difficult terrain and through the new growth to the special location. I never considered grizzly bears or unsuspecting elk who frequented the place. I was focused on our mission. We gazed at the dark, star-filled sky. I had wanted to do this ever since discovering this place for the first time a couple months ago. As the time approached midnight, we headed back across the river, which was incredibly warm, like bath water, and laid on our backs in the parking area for a few more moments. Suddenly, a brilliant meteor streaked across the entire sky with a tail trailing. Forrest was waving goodnight. I'd always wanted to hike the west end of Merry Mountain Trail that runs along Nez Perce Creek, but never did. Dale often talked about that creek being one of his favorite walks. Not only is the creek itself beautiful, but there are meadows full of wildflowers. It did not disappoint. To my delight, I had the trail to myself. My plan was to walk to the rickety bridge crossing the creek two and a half to three miles one way. I hadn't gone far when I heard bison running. I stopped at a safe distance as two bulls ran across the trail. But then life got interesting. I hadn't gone too far when a straggler came running my direction. I was basically standing where the other two had crossed. It seemed to be okay as this guy altered his path a bit to avoid me. But then he changed his mind and came towards me like a slow-moving locomotive. I hurried behind a tree surrounded in brush. I wondered if he saw me. I don't know why he came to my tree, but he did. I played ring around the rosy as he came to get me, but he didn't. He just walked past me. When the shot of human jet fuel subsided in my legs, I laughed out loud. I love bison. After all, I rode my bicycle beside a herd of five bulls in April when I then ran off the pavement and crashed. It was one of the highlights of my life. This one was a bit more than I anticipated though. I rounded the base of the hill and lo and behold, there was an entire herd. I cautiously made my way to the edge of the forest where I hid in the trees. 
I even picked a tree that had a down tree about knee high at its base, just in case I needed to climb a tree. I found out brush at the bottom was not much of a barrier. I spent a lot of time in that forest waiting for the herd to pass. I didn't mind though, as I watched the babies roll in the wallows. Eventually, they passed and I was able to sneak out of the woods back onto the trail. As I made my way across the meadows, swarms of little brown grasshoppers accompanied me. Occasionally, I was escorted by butterflies and larger grasshoppers who turned into a brilliant orange when they flew. Sometimes I walked down to the creek just to admire the beauty of this particular place in Yellowstone. Eventually, I arrived at the rickety bridge, my turnaround point. I enjoyed this trail so much that I went back the next day with the intention of hiking further, but I hadn't gotten much further when there appeared to be black bear prints leading the way. I decided to turn around here. I decided to spend my final day driving to the Delacy Creek Trailhead and hiking back to the GPS nook location. This large bull made my day as he chose my truck to cut across in front of, the way I like to see them, up close and personal, from the driver's seat, not hiding behind a tree. I was delighted to find the GPS nook clean and pristine. And last but not least, Sunday is Forrest's birthday. Let's everyone ring a bell in honor of Forrest at exactly noon mountain time. Happy 91st birthday, Forrest. What a great ride it has been.